Hello and welcome to Kiplus TV. Today we are talking with Jessica Collier again from D2D Technologies. Hi Jessica, good to have you back on the show. How are you doing? Hi guys, doing great, doing great. I hope y'all are as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Jessica, let's get straight to the point. D2D have re just released the D2 switch. Now, before we go into too many details, give us a bit of background into the reason uh, you have released the D2 switch and the problems it solves for your customers. That's a great question, Simon. Actually, so as you know, D2D Technologies primarily makes uh, multiplexers that can send SRT pretty much around the world. Um, one of our most common elements is sending SRT to transmitters from uh, local stations. And so this is great. Um, quite often, it's especially here in the United States, the translators are far away. They can be, you know, over the curve. So uh, away from mm. microwave, um, which is a great idea. The thing is now these people have these stations set up over the curve. They need to insert things like station IDs. Um, occasionally, they may have All to right. cut away from um, some local programming that might be happening at the time or something might go wrong with their network and they may need to cut to something else uh, while they fix their network. So we came up with this platform or this new feature called D2 Switch. And so what D2 Switch is, is it basically will switch your transport stream on command, whether you give it a, a GPIO uh, command, like a contact closure, or whether you log in and you tell it to switch, or you could tell it to switch um, on a time. So for instance, if you want to switch at 8 p.m., uh, if for some reason you're getting to uh, encroaching some other licensing program and you need to switch away from their prime time to your local content, mm -hmm. we could switch every night at like 8 p.m. Um, and then, of course, switch back in time to go back to whatever scheduled programming. And that's actually a problem out here. There's a lot of stations that are airing something, but what's happening is they might be overlapping another market and they just can't play primetime TV uh, for whatever reasons okay. because the other station has a license and so they just have to cut away. So this was a this was a big deal. A lot of people had asked for a way to just switch from one particular SRT stream into like a uh, an ASI input, say for instance, or another SRT stream or some kind of evergreen programming. So they may want to go to like local news while prime time happens. Flavor number two is uh, something called a local ID insertion. And so here at the top of every hour, you have to ID your station. And so, you know, for instance, people come in and they'll put a, a logo over top and say, this is uh, X, Y, Z, you know, in Roanoke mm. and the problem with that is it's very expensive to do that. So if you have an LPTV station, it's going to have a different call letter or possibly a different channel number than the original one. So if you're going over the curve and you need to ID your station, and what we do is we allow you to put in a very short FFmpeg uh, station ID into the Flex 5220, into the open gear card and it's stored there. And you could tell it at the top of every hour to switch the stream to this particular ID and then go back. Now, the reason why that is a game changer for a lot of people is because typically in order to do this, what you would have to do is you would have to decode the stream, insert a switcher right. and a downstream keyer, put that key over and then re-encode it and go back out to the transmitter. So you're talking like thirty or forty thousand dollars <laughs> worth of equipment here just to do that. Whereas with our D2 switch, it's going to automatically switch your station top of every hour to a station ID and then go back to regular programming. So you stay legal, you get to um, show off your station a little bit and say, you know, this is XYZ mm -hmm. in Roanoke. Um, and that's a customized little 10 second clip that IDs your station. So yep. it saves people a lot of money by getting D2 switch. And so the third flavor is uh, something that people have been asking for quite a bit. And it's basically going to be a hitless redundancy. So uh, let's say, for instance, you're sending your signal from your station to your transmitter using a wireless microwave like Ubiquiti, um, which works great most of the time until it doesn't. Like if somebody starts a lawnmower or something in between, who knows what happens? Uh, you start taking hits on your mm -hmm. packets. D2 switch will automatically switch to another source. 
So for instance, if you had uh, like a common internet, you're sending SRT up there and you had a wireless internet and a wireless internet tended to be a little bit more reliable. You could use that as your primary, but if for some reason something goes wrong with that wireless internet, we can switch over to another source if we start seeing a lot of packet jitter come in, you know, and then also notify the customer that yeah. basically that's, you know, that we've gone and switched to um, another source because you're taking some network jitter and you have to go and switch back if you want to. But it just will keep you on the air in the event there's a network issue and, you know, they, they can come up every quite a bit. So uh, we already are capitalizing yeah. on something we built into the open gear card for PBS Warn, which was basically kind of like a redundancy the same way. So if it saw a problem with one stream, it automatically switches to the other. So the three flavors of D2 switch. Lovely. And so it's early days for this particular for the for D2 switch. But um, and it's easy, you know, it's good. It's good to imagine uh, some scenarios and you've obviously put it out there to solve existing problems, your real problems. But have any have you got any customers out there with use cases already? Is it is it, is it working? Is it doing stuff? Yes, actually, we do have a customer out there that's been helping us R&D this and they're using it for the station ID. So um, they have that exact yeah. problem. And this was what gave us the idea is they have an LPTV station. They have their main station, you know, which is in a major um, DC or in a major network area in a hub. And then they have another station yeah. that's kind of far away. It's like 100 miles away. And so the FCC is saying that they have to ID that station, but they don't have enough listeners to spend 40 or, or viewers rather to spend 40 or $50,000 decoding it putting in a switcher a downstream key and then re-encoding it again or buying a transcoder which are also very expensive just to put in a small little id so this has allowed them to uh stay legal and identify their station 100 miles away which obviously is going to have different call letters and it's also a different virtual channel so the use case so far is proving to be really really good Hmm. And, and I guess, Jessica, another use might be then to switch in local lo local content, uh, advertising, news, that type, type of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great point, Simon. So, in fact, if for some reason uh, you do have a break every hour and you don't want to air the commercials from a market before and you want to insert some local content, we can make that switch happen. And the switch can be timed or, again, could be a GPIO, like a contact closure. So that's one use case we don't have yet. But I have somebody um, that's in an international market that's asking for that exact very same thing. So we're going to be developing that over the next uh, few months, probably. Yeah. And of course, live TV, uh, uh, yeah, it, well, it, it overruns sometimes. Uh, sure. If you've tri if you you know you've set it to uh, your station ID to come on once an hour, and let's say that's five to the hour or ten past the hour, whatever, or on the hour, um, are you able to you know? I mean, will it just override, or can we override it? Can we tell it not to do that, or is it you know? Can, can you tell it to do it once an hour when triggered, or when when allowed, or under a certain status, or something like that? Is how does that work? So you don't interrupt question. some important programming. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, if there's something happening like um, an election debate or something, which yeah. we're going to about starting to get it ready. Yeah. And you don't want it to interrupt. You have full yeah. control. In fact, you can use our, uh, our D2 access so you don't actually have to be in front of the unit. You don't have to be in front of the open gear card. You can be pretty much literally anywhere. In fact, we had a guy in an airplane that was able to switch his feed to something else when they decided that, you know, what the content they are airing wasn't what they wanted. So it is 100 percent controllable. Brilliant. Yeah. And if for some reason you want to override that top of the hour, or override that typical everyday switch, it's as simple as just logging in and clicking from anywhere because uh, all of our open gear cards work on an RSSH, which is a reverse SSH protocol. So therefore, um, if you want to talk to a unit and make the switch, you just basically go to D2 monitor, put in the serial number and you can access that unit provided that you've set it up previously and make that switch from literally from anywhere. Like I said, you could be in an airplane bathroom for all that matters <laughs> and be able to switch yeah, your yeah. TV station from one to the other. So it's it's brilliant. So not, not, not that you would do it from an airplane bathroom, but <laughs> sorry, well, who knows? Sorry, who knows? Three, <laughs> so three questions in one now, Jessica. Is it available now? Uh, where can people find out more and give us a rough price point? 
Okay, well, people can find out more by contacting us at d2dtechnologies.com. Um, in there, you could go to our, our, uh, our sales uh, portal, or you could just type sales at d2dtechnologies.com, and we'll all get that. Um, currently, it's still a little bit under development, so you may, um, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you want. We have it developed, but there's going to be mm. some fine-tuning, and the price point is going to be somewhere around an extra $2,000 for the feature. Well, we'll look forward to, uh, to, to having a look and seeing, seeing, seeing it in action and having some more use cases. Thank you very much for coming in and speaking to us. Do check out the website for all that info you need to know about the D2 switch and, uh, and everything else with D2D technologies, of course. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. <laughs>